morning. Our lecture for this morning would be the diagnosis of normal pregnancy. The importance of the problem of diagnosing pregnancy is for the mother to avoid exposure to potential teratogens, to solve abnormal situations for a better maternal outcome, and initial assessment and monitoring through prenatal care. Diagnosis could be done through history, a thorough clinical examination, and laboratory tests. The duration of pregnancy in humans would be 259 to 294 days, and that is 37 to 42 weeks. Median would be 280 days, which is 40 weeks, which when computed, would be your expected date of confinement or EDC. During the first half, there are maternal signs which would fall under presumptive diagnosis. During the second half, there would be fetal signs which would be diagnosis of certainty. So for the first 16 weeks in the first trimester, Diagnosis of pregnancy would usually resort to history. General information should be obtained such as personal data, family history, personal medical history, OB history, data about the partner, and contraceptive history. And history of amenorrhea would signify an increased estrogen and progesterone secretion by the luteal corpus. Conditions of which we should take note of would be a previous regular, spontaneous, and predictable menstruation, now resulting to amenorrhea, and an absence of menstruation for a minimum of 10 days, which would translate to a delay of menses for about two weeks. There are neurovegetative symptoms such as more often associated with pregnancy would be nausea. Over 50% of pregnant, pregnant women would experience nausea. It may be accompanied by vomiting, sy sialurea, pyrosis, any alteration of appetite, taste, smell, and food preferences. This usually appears during 4 to 6 weeks and would spontaneously disappear after 12 to 14 weeks. There would be bladder irritability due to compression and nervous system there would be sleep difficulties, irritability, and insomnia. There would be breast symptoms which um, would signify pregnancy. Would, there would be enlargement, heaviness or tension, and breast tenderness. Also, there would be changes in the nipples and areola. Uh, your nipples and areola would start to darken. By inspection, your breasts would increase in size and your venous network would increase. Your Montgomery tubercles, sebaceous glands, would be um, more prominent. And there is a minute hyperpigmentation of the areola and the nipple as mentioned. In the abdomen, your knee lay and ligra could emerge. And a progressive deformation upward of your symphysis pubis after 12 weeks. Your perineum would also be accentuated with pigment. So this is an example of your Linnea nigra and increased pigmentation. Then we palpate the breast for any consistency and colostrum may start as early as your first trimester. So this is a thick yellowish fluid expressed from the nipples. The abdomen of the pregnant uterus, so there's the upper margin of a globulous soft mass. And the height of the uterine fundus becomes measurable after 12 weeks age of gestation. Your cervix, vagina, and perineum 
would begin to show clinical signs as well. There would be increased vascularity and hyperemia. So there's a characteristic violet bluish color of the mucosa, which is your Chadwick sign. Increased size of the cervix. Your uterus would start to soften of the cervix and isthmus. This is your Heger sign. Enlargement of the uterus, approximately 4 cm per month. And irregular painless uterine contractions, called the Braxton Hicks contractions. So your Heger sign would be the softening of the isthmus palpated to the cervix and your ab abdomen. And other less used signs would be the noble sign and your piscasic sign. Differentials would be an abdominal mass, which could either be a cyst, a uterine myoma, trophoblastic disease, ectopic pregnancy, and a bladder globus. For amenorrhea, it could be emotional stress, endocrine dysfunctions, lactation, anorexia, certain treatments such as antidepressants, methyl dopa, haloperidol, and pseudocyasis. Laboratory diagnosis in general would be the presence of HCG in plasma and urine. This is produced by your syncytia trophoblast, which peaks at 60 to 70 days. Biological tests Immunological tests could also be used to detect and quantify HCG. So in plasma and urine, according to Wick's gestation, it would be increased uh, starting 5 and would peak at around 10 weeks and would decline rapidly at around 15 to 16 weeks. Imaging is very helpful. With abdominal sonography and vaginal sigrography, detecting a uterine pregnancy one week after missed menstruation, so that is usually four to five weeks. Ultrasound imaging is used for assessment of the amniotic sac dimensions. Visualize the fetus and the placenta. <coughs> Measure fetal crown rump length and could detect any twins, detect ectopic pregnancy, or any possibility of abortion or high dotidy for more. So this is your gestational sac as early as 4 to 5 weeks of your first trimester. So ultrasound is most reliable when it's done on the first trimester. Most reliable parameter would be your crown rump length. Second trimester, most reliable would be your biparietal diameter. And third trimester, most reliable parameter would be your femoral length. Your non-biometric parameter includes... <coughs> Maturity of your brain. Starting second trimester, clinical signs would be amenorrhea, which is more than 16 weeks, a continuous progressive enlargement of the abdomen, and perception of fetal movements by the mother beginning 17 to 18 to 18 weeks in multiparas and up to 19 to 20 weeks in primis, which is equivalent to your quickening. Inspection, you would see changes in the face, which is cloasma. This is the mask of pregnancy. Breasts would continue to enlarge and increase in vascularity. Your Montgomery tubercles, pigmented primary areola and the nipples. Abdomen would continue to enlarge. Would have Linnea nigra. Striase, so these are your reddish, slightly depressed streaks. A protruded umbilicus and pigmented scars. 
Trepidinium would continue to be accentuated with pigment. So this is your cloasma and your nipple changes. <coughs> your breasts would continue to change. Your abdomen would be a globulous, soft, contractile, painless mass with still irregular, painless uterine contractions, which are your Braxton Hicks. The height of the uterine fundus becomes measurable, 16 centimeters to 20 weeks. So 20 centimeters is 24 weeks. Balotment sign would be more evident. And auscultation of heart sounds would be done every checkup. So central to clinical Checkups would be your Leopold's maneuver, and we will learn about that later. So, your abdominal examination would be your Leopold's. Leopold's one would be <coughs> looking at the fundus of the uterus and see if your head or the buttocks would be there. Then you Palpate the maternal sides. That would be to us to look for the fetal back and fetal limbs. Then you pull three is your polyx grip. You confirm your findings in you pulled one, and your you pulled four would check for engagement if the fetus is already engaged. Your speculum should check for hyperemia. Again, your Chadwick sign and increased size of the cervix. And your binaural examination would check for your softening of the vagina and the lower and upper segment, up enlargement of the uterus, your Braxton Hicks contractions, and your vaginal balotment to see if the head is in place through the vagina and uterus. Differentials would still be an abdominal mass, ovarian cysts with abdominal development, and a uterus. So your laboratory diagnosis, uh, your of course your HCG would have declined by this time. So your beta HCG would not have any role as much as in the first trimester. Imaging would be very important such as your abdominal sonography and eventually your biophysical profile. So it aims to look at your gestational age. So you look for your parameters, biparietal, femoral length, and abdominal circumference. You look for your fetal morphology and biometry. Still look for multiple pregnancy. Look for your heart tones and look if your placenta is in this. For the third trimester, it's still amenorrhea and enlargement of the abdomen and perception of the fetal movement by the mother. So by inspection, these are still the changes by inspection. And palpation, your abdomen, especially the leupolds, could be done, especially done in the third trimester. So this is your 29 to 40 weeks diagnosis of pregnancy. This is your fundic height. Deep palpation, you identify the presenting part, if the head is firm, round, or large. Lateral palpation on the sides of the uterus, if the back is unelongated, the limbs are small with irregular parts. Then, you auscultate at the fetal back side below the amicus. <clears throat> so, this is how your Leopold's maneuvers would be done. So, the hands on the side would be your... Leopold's 2, then the one pointing towards the synthesis pubis will be your Leopold's 4, and the last one would be your Leopold's 1. <coughs> this is important as we determine fetal position, which we will, which we will learn in evaluation. Your third trimester, 
your internal examination gain, um, gains more importance. So your external cervical os would be slit-like or round with a mucus plug, and your bimanual examination would begin to soften, and you would feel the fetal presenting Ultrasound imaging would still play a role, abdominal and vaginal sonography, which aims for morphology and biometry, heart movements, breathing movements, evaluation of the amniotic fluid, and insertion of the placenta. So these are your presumptive evidences of pregnancy. So this would be subjective and just with um, just a little bit of possibility. So it is non-specific. So not everyone who is nauseous and vomiting is pregnant or having difficulty in urination, fatigue, or has perceptions of fetal movement. It is presumptive. Signs would be cessation of menses, changes in the breast, changes in the cervical mucus, discoloration of the vaginal mucosa, increased skin pigmentation, and does the woman believe that she is pregnant? Probable, so this is increasing in possibility, would be enlargement of the abdomen, changes in the shape, size, and consistency of the uterus, changes in the cervix, Braxton Hicks contractions, balotment, physical outlining of the fetus, and presence of HCG in serum or urine. Patient could be pregnant, but there are also other conditions wherein this, um, wherein these conditions may arise from. Positive signs of pregnancy means you are 100% sure that the patient is pregnant. And this is identifying fetal heart activity separately and distinctly from the mother, perception of fetal movements by the examiner, and recognition of the embryo of the fetus through imaging methods. So to assess gestational age, first day of your last menstrual period plus the number of weeks. These are the days when the mother has felt the first fetal movements plus 22 weeks in multiparas or 20 weeks in primiparas. The uterine height plus 4 is equals to the number of gestational weeks and ultrasound examination during the first 12 weeks of amenorrhea. And this is important especially number two and number three for patients who do not know their last menstrual period. Okay, thank you for listening to Diagnosis of Pregnancy. Uh, please subscribe to my channel for more lectures on obstetrics and gynecology. Thank you.